Next, we'll look at standard deviation. Well, uh, let's do an introduction of standard deviation first. So let's say we have uh, two sets of uh, of series of data series. So one is three, five, seven, and the other is zero, five, ten. Okay. In both cases, the average is five. But you can see there's some difference between these two data series, right? Which is not captured by the average. Precisely, the numbers in this first series are closer to the mean or the average. Numbers are closer to the average compared to here where the numbers are further. Numbers are further away from the average. Right? In, in simple words, so, so my average is 5 and you see 3 and 7 are closer to 5 compared to 0 and 10, right? So there's more spread in the second data series. And what we call this is that there's low deviation from the average in the first case and you have a high deviation, okay? Now mathematically, this can be expressed as this formula. So standard deviation ST is given by, and I'll tell you why it's called standard. The formula for this is summation sign. Some of you might have seen this before. Xi minus, I'll explain this once I write this down. Four. I equal to 1 to n. Okay, now, rarely you would need to use this. So you would never have to use this formula uh, on, on GRE. Okay, but you need to know the implications of this formula. First of all, let's explain what things are in there. So first you have the square root. You have n, which is, we all know, the number of data points in your series. Then you have this difference. And what this difference means is that you take your data point, which is represented by xi, and you subtract it off from a, which is the average, okay? And and you do this for each data point, since this is the summation sign, and you add those all those differences. So let's do it for for this series, three, five, seven. <clears throat> so I have I'm going from i equals one to n. So n in my case is three. And I want to find the difference between the data point and the average for each of these, and I'll square them and then I'll add them. So in this case, my first data point is 3. So I'll write 3 minus 5, which is the average. I'll square that. And I'll do it for the second data point, which is 5 minus 5. And I'll square that. And I'll do it for the last data point, which is 7 minus 5 over square. And whatever that sum is, I don't care. But, but this is the summation represents this, this process, where you take the difference between the average and the data point, you square it, and you add all these averages, uh, all these differences together. Okay, just to to reemphasize, this is we are doing it for this series three, five, seven. All right. So this is what the difference in the numerator represents. You can know all n is, and we are taking the square root. And the another obvious thing is that the standard deviation has to be positive, right? You are squaring the difference. You are taking the square root. Uh, it always has to be positive. <coughs> okay. So, so let's see how GRE would test you on this because they would never ask you to calculate SD by punching in a calculator. That's not how GRE works. So here's an example. So let's see what we have. We have a data set S1, okay, and we have a data set S2, right? And we are given the standard deviation of X1, of, of, of the first data set, which is X. Let's just say it's X, not X1, just X. Right. And the question asks us what is the standard deviation for the second data set. So let me represent it by 2. So ST2, ST1 is X. Right. So again, we can punch all this in the calculator and come up with something for ST2. But that's not the question. And uh, actually, on this question, all the answer choices are in terms of X. I didn't put the answer choices here. But trust me on that, all the answer choices have X in there. So you have to find uh, it in X. Now, so if I if I don't want to use the calculator here, what can I do? Let's look at the numbers. 
21, 23, 25, all odd numbers, all consecutive odd numbers from 21 to 31. Hmm, what's the average in this case? Well, when I have consecutive odd numbers like this, the average is just the middle number, which, and this, since it is even, the average is what comes in the middle of these two numbers, which is 26. So my average here is 26. And similar would go here, the average would be 226. Right? Now the other thing to realize here is the difference between the first data set and the second data set is that everything has basically has this 200 added, right? So if I add to 21, 200, I get 221. If I add 200 to 223, I get 223. Right? Uh, okay, let's write down the formula for standard deviation. Well, it's the summation of this difference over n, right? Now in both data sets, n is same, right? n is same. I have n equals 6 here, I have n equals 6 here. Okay, so that goes away. Uh, average is different, alright. The numbers are different too, so xi is different in each case. But the important thing to realize is that this difference, the difference between the number and the average in a particular data set it's actually constant. So let me show what I'm saying. So let's look at the first data set. And I'll look at the difference between 21 and the average there. So what's that? That's negative 5. Okay. So let's do the same for the second data set. I pick the first number in the series, 221, and I take the difference to the average. Well, that's all the same, negative 5. Well, so what does that mean? Well, it means that this quantity is same for both the sets, S1 and S2, because they are, the, the average, the, the distance between the average and each number stays constant across the two sets, okay? So my numerator is same, my denominator is same, it means SD1 is equal to SD2, and SD2 is just X, which is my answer, okay? So see, you didn't have to <coughs> calculate this ugly formula, which you can if you want to, but but it's it's, it's a big time drain if you go that way, and it's it's much efficient if you realize that the difference between the average and the data point is consistent across the two data sets, okay, which solves my problem right there. Okay, uh, so that finishes our videos on average. Uh, averages, median mode, range, and standard deviation, everything about statistics. You can do in variance the practice exercise on page 307. Okay, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you again next time. Bye.